Hello everyone, welcome to another practice session and this practice session we are going to discuss about microscopy. In exams like IIT, JAM, CSI or NET, CAD B, CUCT or GATE, you would encounter some question from the topic of microscopy. Now many of you guys don't have a detailed idea about microscopy, so that is why you might think microscopy is difficult, but it's not. It's really easy. So we would first analyze the trend in this video. So we would get to know what are the topics from which questions are asked in IIT JAM especially. First of all, they would ask questions from the working principle of the compound microscope. They can also ask questions about the factors that affect resolution. And lastly, they can ask questions about principles and usage of several types of microscopy. So these are the three major points from which they can possibly ask questions. Now we'll analyze the questions and we would understand. So all these questions would be from these three, uh, uh, three categories. Now before that, let me tell you that you must be thinking that how to prepare this topic or how to prepare any topic. Now in that situation, let me tell you, in COVID times, you should not go out of your home. You should stay inside your home. You should study safe from your home. And also you need to think about your financial aspect during these downtime. Because all these coaching institute takes a lot of money. And An Academy brings you a Space Jam Accelerate program, which is a scholarship program which offers almost 10 lakhs of fellowship in the month of May. So all you need to do is go there, give this exam. The link is given in the description. The exam is tomorrow, 11 a.m. If you score significantly well, then the scholarship would be for you and you must be eligible for 100% scholarship. That means the entire plus course would be free for you. So don't waste your time, enroll right now. Even if you don't qualify, you would get some idea that what kind of questions are asked. It's always nice to do some kind of practice session all the time. So all you need to do is download the app. You can use my code AP10 for access and you can give, start giving the test and you might win this fellowship. In an academy, all the educators and the non-academic staffs are working hand by hand to make this product even more useful for you guys. And that is why, show some respect and check out these tests now. Okay, so we're going to start with question one. This question says, resolving power of a microscope is a function of wavelength of light used, numerical aperture of the lens system, refractive index, and option D says wavelength of the light used and numerical aperture of the lens system. So which is the correct option? So let me tell you, the correct option here would be option D. So we know resolving power is proportional to numerical aperture divided by or it's directly proportional to numerical aperture and inversely proportional to wavelength. So that means these, these are terms which would affect the resolving power of a microscope, right? Numerical aperture of a lens. So greater the numerical aperture, greater would be the resolution. But do you really know why? If you want to know why, soon I would have a microscopy course in an academy and the link would be provided in the description. So you can join that class to learn details about it. But from this formula, at least we can appreciate it would be proportional to numerical aperture and inversely proportional to the wavelength. So these factors would affect resolving power. Okay, question number two says the greatest resolution in light microscopy can be obtained with longest wavelength of visible light used, an objective with minimum numerical aperture, shortest wavelength of visible light used, shortest wavelength of visible light and along with objective which would have a maximal numerical aperture. So which would be your correct option? So correct option would be option D. Again, the formula is the same. So if you use, I mean, you need to increase the resolving power. Resolving power would be high when any one of these terms would be high, right? If n sine theta, which is basically the numerical aperture, if it is bigger, obviously resolving power is directly proportional to it. It would also be big, right? It, it's, it's, it's increasing, right? 
Now, if lambda, which is inversely proportional to the resolving power, if lambda goes down, resolving power goes up. So, if you remember this formula, you can answer questions related to this aspect very easily. You learned it. Okay. Now, next we move to another question which says total magnification of a microscope is obtained by magnifying power of the objective lens, magnifying power of the eyepiece, magnifying power of the condenser lens, magnifying power of both objective lens and eyepiece. So, there are so many lens in a compound microscope. You might be very confused that which of these lens or lens systems would result in the total magnification of the microscope. So, it is magnification of are eyepiece as well as the objective. Okay, which of the following microscopy technique relies on the specimen interfering with the wavelength of light to produce a high contrast image without the need of dyes or any damage to the sample, right? So, I mean, here, you have to understand this particular question says which of the following microscopy techniques and they talked about the principle relies on specimen interfering with the wavelength of light to produce high contrast image okay without the need of dye or damage to the sample what this microscopy would be called right so conventional bright field microscopy phase contrast electron microscopy fluorescence microscopy so, you got it correct. Phase contrast microscopy. Here the contrast would be provided, here the contrast would be provided by the phase shift. So, if you want to learn more about phase contrast microscopy, you can watch my Unacademy course. Now, in 2021 IIT JAM Biotechnology, they asked a question. Which one of the following microscopy techniques provides a three-dimensional perspective of live, unstained, transparent specimen obtained from wild? Now, this particular answer would be very similar to the previous question, but this one is differential interference contrast microscopy. Both differential interference contrast and phase contrast microscopy can be used to visualize a specimen and it can give you high contrast. But phase contrast microscopy and differential interference contrast microscopy's principle of working is different. If you want to learn more about the principles, you have to come to the unacademic class and the link is given in the description. Okay, question number five says resolving power of a microscope is a function of, okay, so we have uh, solved this question. This is one of the most asked question in many examinations. So you know this. This question was again asked in IIT JAM 2018. This question says which one of the following microscope has a working principle most similar to the way um, a blind person reads confocal microscope epifluorescence microscope atomic force microscope or total internal reflection microscope so what they really want from you is you know the basic principle of these microscopes microscopy techniques and their usage so this particular answer would be atomic force microscopy. Again, the details would be provided in my unacademic classes, but let me tell you, atomic force microscopy is used to calculate the rigidity of a membrane. It can literally calculate the Young's modulus. So, it has a cantilever which scans the surface and there is a laser detection system which kind of scan the topology of a surface and gives you a, a overall picture, a topographic map of a surface. Now, the way blind people read, they have some indentation on a uh, card or book. So, they touch with their hand and they kind of try to read that stuff, right? So, they have a different code of reading. And so, they have to put their hand in order to read this, right? So, this is very comparable to a cantilever used in atomic force microscopy. And from that angle, this question was asked. Now, a similar type of question that can possibly be asked based on that, which is not asked in any uh, exam, but it can be asked. Which one of the following microscopy principle is very similar to a pinhole camera? Confocal microscopy, fluorescence microscopy, phase contrast microscopy, differential interference con contrast microscopy. So, if you know the answer, let me know in the comment and I'll say which one is the correct answer and the details about the uh, concept would be provided in an academic class. Okay, so I have already answered it anyway. So, it's confocal microscopy, which uses a pinhole system 
to improve your resolution. Pinhole ensures out of focus light does not reach the detector and in short it enhances the resolution. It, it, I mean it, it can really differentiate between points which are really close in space. Okay. The last question is in order to visualize a neuron which is situated 5 millimeter depth from the brain surface, a neuroscientist should use which of the following microscopy techniques. So here a scenario is provided and you have to use a following technique, right? Again, the question says differential interference contrast microscopy, two photon microscopy, confocal microscopy or super resolution microscopy, which can possibly be used in this case, which is best option here. Answer is two photon imaging. Two photon microscope use uh, two pulses of um, light and this light is basically infrared range. So greater the wavelength, lesser would be the scatter and it can uh, image deeper specimen. If you want to learn more about two photon microscopy, my Academy course would provide you with that uh, kind of like uh, details. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can also connect to me via Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn, let's say. So see you in the next video. Thank you. And do let me know in the comment, how do you think about this video?